Welcome to In the Know with the Stafford SO, a podcast presented by the Stafford County Sheriff's Office in Virginia that brings you the stories of the men and women who work tirelessly to keep our community safe each day. With In the Know with the Stafford SO, you'll find out what life is really like behind the law enforcement badge. Thank you for listening and thank you for your support. Welcome to In the Know with the Stafford SO. I am Kathy Volbrecht, your host for today. With me again today is Major Sean Kimmitz of the Stafford Sheriff's Office. And what we'd like to do is give you a quick update of our response to the coronavirus pandemic and some recent changes that have taken place. Major Kimmitz, thank you for joining me again today. Thanks for having me. So what we'd like to do is just talk briefly about some of the most recent changes that have come our way. Um, with the biggest one being the fact that county government buildings opened up on May 15th. So I wanted to just have you talk about what could visitors to the public safety building expect when they come here? So we would still encourage uh, citizens to use our online portals to go through our website to try to make a, an online report or to contact us by telephone. Um, we'd also recommend that if they're trying to get a copy of an accident report, or a copy of a regular incident report, they can certainly go online and do that, or they can contact our records division and have it mailed to them, faxed to them, or emailed to them. So that would save them the inconvenience of coming to our office. Okay. However, our office is now open. Mm -hmm. When you respond, you'll come into the vestibule of our lobby, and you would then make contact with our receptionist. She would find out exactly what you were looking for, and then if you were actually gonna come into our lobby, we would ask you to do a self-check of your temperature and confirm that you didn't have any symptoms or, or weren't experiencing any, anything that could possibly be COVID-19. And once that's done, you'll be coming into our lobby and the lobby is marked off to allow for social distancing. And then the deputy would come in and speak with them. Okay. Now I know that when the building was closed and we had our, some of our employees coming into the office, they had to take temperature checks. Are there thermometers set up for our citizens or visitors to do that? Absolutely. We have, we have a table set up in the vestibule. So right next to the phone, the, the citizen that's coming in would have the opportunity to take their temperature there. If they don't want to do that, they're certainly welcome to wait outside and the deputy would respond out to the, in front of the lobby in our parking area and would, would greet them there and, and conduct business. What about masks? Are they required to wear masks while in our building? They are not required to wear masks. It's encouraged to wear a mask, but it's not a requirement. Okay. Now, we've talked about the public safety building, but what about our deputies? Are, are there going to be any differences in how they conduct themselves as we continue responding through the next phases of opening up? So our, our goal hasn't changed. It's, it's still public safety. The deputies will still be trying to do social distancing. They're still going to try to handle as many calls as possible over the phone or online. Uh, but obviously, there are certain calls that we will have to respond to in person. So the deputies will, will try to do that six foot um, social distancing. When necessary, they will still be wearing their PPE, the protective gear, whether that is the mask, gloves, uh, eye protection. Um, so that still will be in effect. Deputies are still carrying the wash, the hand wash and hand sanitizer in their vehicles. And after each arrest, they will be cleaning the back seat of the vehicle to make sure that it's clean for the next prisoner or next person they have to transport. Okay. We've had to cancel many of our community programs, and I know that's been a hardship for some of our staff because community is what the sheriff's office is all about. Um, you know, we're talking about badges for baseball. We're talking about our D.A.R.E. graduation, National Night Out. Can you talk about what's going to happen in the future for those programs? It is so unfortunate. We look forward every year to those events and bringing the, the, the children in here. Uh, the baseball camp has been such, such a wonderful event. The Junior Deputy Academy has really expanded, getting the middle school and elementary school kids in here and giving them an experience, a week-long academy to learn about law enforcement. And it's so unfortunate that those had to be canceled. And this year, we won't be able to hold those. Uh, events such as our Citizens Police Academy, Neighborhood Watches, Business Watches, those are just being postponed. We're waiting on further guidance from the Virginia Department of Health to see when exactly we'll be able to reschedule those and, and hold them. Um, for now, our, our training is even on hold. Unless it's a mandatory to keep our certifications, we're, we're kind of pushing that off. Um, we just did recently start up with testing new deputies. Uh, so if you're applying for the job here at the Sheriff's Office, we are running testing, but we're keeping it under 10 people, and we're asking those applicants to wear masks when they come in to take the test. Okay. 
Now let's talk about scams a little bit because unfortunately, during times of great fear like we've just gone through, there are people out there who will prey on that, who will use that to um, get what they want. Can you give our listeners um, an idea of what, what they can do if they suspect that they're a victim of a scam? It is unfortunate. Uh, the criminals are now aware that stimulus checks have been mailed out, so they're anxious to get their hands on your money. So just a few uh, tips. If you receive an offer that they're asking you to act on immediately, that's a red flag. It's probably something that's, that's going to be a scam. So you need to take your time, fully investigate. If someone contacts you, you do not want to give them your information. So if you receive an email or a phone call, do not give out any of your personal information over the phone or over the internet unless you have actually made contact and know exactly who you're talking to. It's, the criminals have become so sophisticated, they're now spoofing email addresses. So it may come across as someone you think you know, mm -hmm. or maybe the phone number will show up in your caller ID as, as someone like the sheriff's office, and they're actually copying that information to make you think it's someone else. So unless you've actually made that phone call, do not give out any of that information. One of the scams we've seen a lot of recently is they'll contact either um, a person at home, and it's, it's, they're saying that they're your your priest or someone in your worship service and that they're collecting money for a charity and that they need you to get a gift card and submit that gift card number to them to support the charity. And, and folks are anxious to help. Our community is so great about, about being so, so kind um, and an out, outpouring of, of support. So they're going out and getting that, those gift cards and providing that information only to find out later that their priest or their, or their worship person did not actually ask for that information. So it's going to a, to a, a vendor out there. It's unfortunate, but hopefully with a little bit of education, um, some of our community members won't ever have to become a victim of a scam. And if they do, then they should immediately call the sheriff's office. They could come to our website. That's StaffordSheriff.com for more information as well. Absolutely. Um, we, we would also encourage people to put up no soliciting signs. If they don't want people coming to their door, just put up the no soliciting sign. You can also register for the do not call registry. Uh, put your phone numbers on that, and then you can hopefully get rid of some of those unwanted phone calls. Uh, the, the best advice is if, if you get one of those calls, don't answer the phone or simply once you pick it up, just hang up. Don't, don't be afraid of being rude. If you did not solicit that call, don't be afraid to just hang the phone up. Okay, so if you don't know that number, if you didn't solicit the call, hang up um, or uh, just don't answer it uh, at all in the first place. Correct. There have also been a lot of discussions about how the pandemic and the response to it has affected people's mental health. Have you noticed in the sheriff's office an uptick in responses to mental health emergencies? We have seen a significant number of mental health calls and we would encourage the public if they do need help to contact someone, whether it's, it's the sheriff's office, whether it's their primary care physician, it's someone in the worship community, just a trusted friend or a family member. Uh, talk those problems out. We don't wanna see anyone uh, suffering during this crisis. Some of the best ways to, to avoid, avoid that is staying on a, on a routine. Make sure you're eating a healthy diet, making sure you're getting enough rest, and try to avoid watching too much coverage of the COVID-19. Um, one of the things I saw was limiting your screen time. Well, as the father of two teenagers, try limiting you the screen time of a teenager. It's right. a pretty difficult thing, but yes. if you could try to limit your screen time, that would also improve your mental health. We believe. Okay. Now, we are by no means through or finished with responding to the coronavirus pandemic, but could you talk about some of the lessons that we've learned in the sheriff's office um, in our response and how we've dealt with what's been happening? Sure, and, and it's, it's a constant process of trying to learn what, what works, what doesn't work. We're very happy with, with our virtual roll calls. They've been great, and knock on wood, we haven't had a single case of the COVID-19 in any department member, so that's been great. We think it's been greatly contributed to the use of our emergency operations center, following the guidelines from the VDH, using our protective gear, uh, eliminating a lot of our meetings and, and social distancing. That's been, that's been wonderful. Uh, one of the great things was using our school resource officers for high visibility areas. We've heard a lot of positive comments from the public saying how much they appreciated seeing our deputies near the businesses when they had to come out, they felt very safe and secure. We've been able to use a lot more of our phone complaints. We've seen those on the rise. So people are taking advantages 
advantage of making phone complaints instead of having to drive to our office or a deputy actually responding to their home to take the report. So those have all been positives. Uh, something we've learned we need to improve upon is having an infectious disease control officer. We have one, but we've never used them to this level for this length of time. It's typically a deputy was on the scene of a call and was bit by a suspect and may have had the blood transfer that way. This has been such a prolonged event involving so many people. We recognize now the need for additional infectious disease control officers. We've relied a lot on the fire department and they've been stretched a little thin during this event as well. So if we can get more people trained up in that, that's gonna be great. Uh, having a safety officer here at the office, uh, trying to limit entry into the sheriff's office to only one, one general area would be very helpful. And starting the temperature checks a little bit earlier would have been helpful. Okay. Is there anything else that you would like to add, Major Kimmitz? Just to thank the community for their support. We've seen an outpouring of, of personal protective equipment, their thoughts, their prayers. I, I'd like to show you two of the, the cards I recently received for National Police Week from two young men in our community. Um, they, they knew that Captain America was one of my favorite uh, favorite superheroes, so they made me these two cards. And these, these mean the world to us. These, these come in constantly from different church groups. From, from different schools, systems, and stuff like that. So th those cards mean a lot to our deputies, as, as well as the, uh, the, the donations that come in for the food banks and stuff like that. So thank you to the community. Know that we're here to support you. And if you need anything at all, they can contact us. Major Kimmitz, thank you so much for joining me again today to talk about our response to the coronavirus pandemic. And if you would like more information, you can visit the Stafford County website at staffordsheriff.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And that wraps up our podcast for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be safe and have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to In the Know with the Stafford SO. This podcast is produced by members of the Sheriff's Office and is one more way we connect with our community. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Visit our website at staffordsheriff.com for details about our social media channels as well as events where you can meet our staff. Thank you for your support.